Howdy fellas, Mugman here, and welcome back to Mugman Plays Cuphead the Delicious Last Course. Last episode, we pretty much trounced the one freaking uh, glacier dude, and then we went to the astral plane for what I can only describe as a very weird trip. And we also got our butts beat by this sort of dogfight thing, and in this episode, we're gonna try to beat them. Hmm. You know what? Something just... <sighs> You know, I've been enjoying doing this series, but something just isn't right. Something feels off about all this. You know, it's like something's missing. I just don't know what it is. Yoo-hoo! How about a wife? Ah, oh, there she is! <laughs> Hi, hon! <laughs> it's only been a while, hasn't it? Oh, it definitely has been a while. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so good to see you again. Oh, I've been playing the DLC, I see. Oh, without you a doubt. Have enjoyed yourself? Oh, I've enjoyed myself, but I've also had some difficulty with these howling aces. It's been a trip. I feel like that's an understatement. Well, given the fact that you're working against dogs that not only shoot yarn balls, toss tennis balls, you're also trying to control everything while on top of a plane yourself. It's the most unique way to do a flight-based level. And I gotta be honest, I'm here for it. Like, unfortunately, I'm definitely a little rusty in some respects. So, this is a plane fight without actually being the typical plane fight. Essentially. <sighs> and it's quite a pain in the butt, as you can see. <sighs> You got this. Well, You've been doing very well so far, has it, as it's been, so I think you'll get this. Well, let's hope. I mean, I'm four parts in, you know, and uh, it really has been way too long. How things been, you know? Like, where's the time gone? Oh, it's been, what, three, four years since I've last shown up on, shown up on here? Yeah, I mean, you and I keep track of each other, you know, just through calls and some visits and such, but it's been a while since we've actually been on screen together, you know? Like, I think it has been about four years. <laughs> and in the comment section, did you really think that I was going to do this series without getting a guest or two on board? Come on! I had to make it, it happen not, once. It would not have been a Cuphead playthrough play without, without a guest appearance or two. Heck no! Of course I was going to make it happen, but I was going to put you guys in a little suspense first. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but even so, this part's not too bad. It's here where things get really annoying. Whoa. First you got to dodge lasers. Not too bad, and there's a parryable one here. But now hmm. things start to shift. Literally. I am sorry? Yeah, it shifts perspective, as well as reverses controls depending on where you are located in the freaking board. So you have to account for all of that when... Whoa! Moving! That, oh, that messes with the brain all too much. Oh, oh it does, goodness. it does. Like, I'm trying to freaking balance it out, but it's a... Whoa! Real pain in the butt! Like, you gotta be quick on your feet! <laughs> I say as I then beat it. <laughs> this happens every time. Every time this happens. I have a problem in the last episode trying to beat this. Now this episode, I beat it the first freaking try. How did... What did... Well, did, try number two, but still. I mean... I knew you got it. I mean... <laughs> I forgot how nice that was. <laughs> and with that, we have pineapple mint. Now... That pretty much was the last ingredient we needed, so now we have to go back to that salt baker fellow. But there's still some things to wrap up first. Now, where the heck is that diddly darn sky ladder? Sky ladder, you say? Yes. I have seen bits and pieces of the DLC, but I've not, but I've not touched this myself. So, oh, I'm well, coming in partially blind. Okay. Well, do you want to get a tour of the island itself? Cause I don't mind showing you around. I mean, if it means more time, it means more time with you, my my dear Mugs, Muggy. I would love it. <laughs> well, when you first arrive, you arrive here on this pier. By that point, you go up these stairs, and you're basically in the main town square. This is where the bakery is. This is where we're gonna have to go next. 
here's basically where you learn how to use the new charm that they gave us, the cookie, which allows you to play as our newest friend, Miss Chalice. Her playstyle is actually pretty interesting. It's not the same as mine or my brother's. So, how this works is instead of having parries, you get a double jump. So you're wondering, how do you parry? You dash parry, it seems. Hmm. So you'd have to incorporate any parry you do into your dash, because that's the only way you can do it. You also get a nifty dodge roll, which allows you to be invincible for a short period of time. Well, not not only not only to get, become invisible for a bit, but also move, move. So, for things like projectiles, it'd be a lot easier to to dodge. Oh, indeed. at least in theory. In theory, yes, but in practice, it can be really tough because you're gonna have to incorporate all of your different movements to this new playstyle, which makes it more fun, but also more complicated. But in any case. Once you leave the main square and do the tutorial, Porkrine set up shop here as well. This is basically I... a competition space for this mountain here, I think. Got it. Going back to Porkrine, I did notice you were using a new weapon. Ah, yes. Porkrine has up to stock lately with three new weapons. The red one that I was using is called Crackshot, which is basically a stronger version of Chaser, but it only shoots one at a time, kind of like they mixed Chaser and Lobber together, almost. The one I've really been enjoying is Converge, which is a three-bolt shot, kind of like, if I had to describe it, think Spread Gun from Contra, only with two shots less. And if you aim, it actually converges the bullets together into a steady stream. Hmm. That actually could be quite useful. Oh, it is, especially on bosses that require a lot of, like, aiming and focusing. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Once we go down the stairs, we then head towards this igloo area, which is where we fight Mortimer Freeze. Then, crossing the stone bridge, we have the graveyard, which has a puzzle in and of itself. So, once you get the cursed relic, which is another interesting object in this DLC, you have to solve a puzzle here. And this is also where you fight the Howling Aces. Down here, this sort of a deserty area, is where you can fight our one plane battle of the game, Esther Winchester. And yes, that name does sound like someone really wanted to pull a rhyme or two. Esther Winchester? Hmm. So, that somehow is both... That somehow is both... Seems to be too, um, seems to be a mouthful, and yet also rolls off the tongue quite a bit. It does. You, How you does don't that think work? It, you wouldn't think it would work, but it does. Oddly enough. How does? How did it pull it off? <laughs> Not sure. But over here in this small little like webbed-off cavern, you have the moonshine mob, which is essentially a mafia of insects and an anteater, led by a snail. Huh. Huh. Yeah, this this island is interesting, I'll say that much. We have a giant, we have an ice wizard, we have a group of dog dog fighters, literally. We have a cow that is a cowgirl that shoots snake oil bullets that become snakes. Yeah, it's a little bit odd, I must say. And then I mean... <laughs> Sorry. I mean, this is Cuphead. You really expect them to not be clever with the bosses. True, but the most interesting thing, apart from these battles, is this part, the ladder I was telling you about. This leads to the King's Leap. And I just jump off it. <coughs> Did not mean to do that! <laughs> that was my bad! Whoops. Anywho, first off, love the fact they actually used a solid background type thing for this. That is freaking cool. Like claymation. Oh, that is wonderful. Exactly. Now, to explain the King's Leap, essentially, you have to fight all the pieces that you would find on a chessboard, save for the king. To do this, it's nothing but parrying. Nothing but that. You can only parry. No shooting, no nothing. No items. It's all about skill in the most pure way possible. A, a parry challenge. Yes, and every time you beat one, you get two coins for it, which is how you buy stuff from Porkrine. 
Now, the one I'm fighting right now is the Rook, who is an executioner. And you have to bounce mm. heads back. I'll say this, I, it's about time they gave that they actually gave a more Harry specific challenge in this game. <laughs> I agree. Like we had the pacifist challenge for like run and gun levels, but nothing compared to this. Like this is a genuine test of skill and endurance, as well as memorization. I'm just trying to be careful not to get hit because the only way to bounce these heads back is to make sure you follow them along the way back. <sighs> but as you can mm, see... Looks... <laughs> what, two, three hip hits more? Um, not, oh, too so not too sure in all honesty. Like, the meter for these challenges can be a little bit trickier because you don't know the damage output of every parry that goes into it. It does seem to be a bit harder to know when you're in a different phase. Indeed. It's harder to read, at least for this particular battle. I do know that when the skulls start popping up, as well as the sparks start shooting out on the bottom, you've entered another phase. But apart from that, I can't gauge it, because I'm too focused trying to bounce back these different heads. Which, I gotta admit, I do love that they have multiple head styles and multiple expressions because it's not just the one head, there's actually multiple. And that's kind of cool in my opinion. As morbid as it is! Eh, 1920s cartoons were always a bit mid on the morbid side, which was kind of why it's so fascinating. Uh, yep. Oof. Uh, but it also makes for a good challenge. I do love the little detail that he's thinking of his freaking um, guillotine wife, or guillotine lover. That's kind of a fun little... <laughs> That's funny. I find that to be humorous. That is... That is quite hilarious and also kind of cute, I must yeah. say. Like, it gives it personality in a weird way. Speaking of personalities, I'm surprised a certain blimp hasn't shown her personality around here yet. Oh, trust me, she tried to get in earlier, but... She did? Mm-hmm. I made sure to show her the door because, well... I wanted to spend, spend time with my butt man after so long. Oh, I wanted to spend time with you too. Also, gosh darn it! Getting closer, but still not close so enough. Close. Uh, so people have been asking when the wedding is. Guys, you're a few years late. We already had it. Like, that was kind of a private affair. Hmm, probably could have made more public at the time, but... Mm, true. Not that... I so glad that it happened. Likewise. Though I'm sure there's a wedding video around here somewhere. We gotta give them something, I think. Don't know how, but we'll figure it out. Oh, we'll find a way. We always do. Exactly. <laughs> well, on my side of the woods, things have been very adventurous. I can safely say I have traveled around the world in these years. Oh, really? Well, my current adventure involves me becoming a a living tree, a giant boulder-based creature that sur can survive in hot environments, and a fish person that can summon electricity as a barrier. That sounds very intriguing. Indeed it is. Also, yes, when you do beat one of these things, you actually get more cash, as demonstrated by the king handing over some coins. Very nice. Indeed. So yeah, I've definitely had some adventures. I've been to hell, literally. I've been to space. I have, whoa, I forgot about this. Whoa, okay, hello, whoa. Alrighty, let's uh not get kicked in the pants by the queen who is Dropping all sorts of stuff. What the heck do I do here? <laughs> Apart from... You have, to... you have to aim at random with the cannons. Oh, that's tricky. The fate of damage is in the hands of a cannoneer. 
Okay, this is definitely gonna be the hardest one of the bunch. Whoa! Okay. Considering it's the queen, I would expect a bit more of a challenge. True. Though, you'd think the king would be the more challenging. Although, then again, the king, in terms of chess, definitely the weakest of the chess pieces. Surprisingly so, yes. Like... Oh! Uh, well, that happened! Without First time? Without getting touched. How the flip a dip did I do that? Because you are a because you are a you are a very talented mug. I, I try. <laughs> All right. Well, that takes care of the king's leap, which I think was the last thing. So might as well buy everything at pork rinds and uh, let's see this salt baker dude to get um Miss Chalice. Pretty much normalized. All uh, right, because the story of this is that Miss Chalice wants your help in trying to give her a more solid form. Pretty much, she wants to become corporeal again, but unfortunately, the cookie only provides a temporary relief. You need we need this wonder tart thing to make it a permanent affair, so that's why we need to beat all these bosses to gather up the ingredients that they have. So let's head to the bakery and let's give these ingredients and why is there a trapdoor? Um not liking this. Um I've got a bad feeling about this. Of course. Why, why am I not so surprised that you would fight the salt baker in one way or another? Well, I mean, we could be wrong on this. I mean, it couldn't be that he's... Never mind, he is evil. I think that <sighs> kind of spells it out right there. Just look at that. Pure maniacal evil. Ugh, of course. Why am I not surprised at this point? Welcome back, you meddlesome brats. I didn't think you'd be back so soon. No matter. It's too late to stop me now. The Wonder Tart will be my finest work yet. A shame I never told you about the most important secret ingredient. A living soul. While you suckers were out doing my bidding, I nabbed your little friend here. With her soul baked into the Wonder Tart, the cosmic powers of the astral plane will be mine. Cuphead Mugman, you gotta help me. But first, I'll take those ingredients, and then I'll use your heads as serving dishes! Okay, those eyes were manic beyond belief. Uh, he himself is quite manic, I would say. Holy cannoli! Did you just take the dough and... He just squeezed the strawberries out of... He is a... Is it safe to say he's worse than the devil? Because... He just killed a cube of sugar. What the, what the heck? I have no words for this creep. I, I, I got nothing. Whoa! He's slicing up all of his ingredients that are sentient, no less. And I feel so bad for all the ingredients we've gathered. Holy crap. The music also is not helping. It is so menacing. Speaking of menacing... That laugh! The, dev the devil wasn't that wasn't this... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The devil was a jerk, but he wasn't this diabolical! Even more diabolical than the devil. That has to be a new record. Uh, that, that just stuns me. That just stuns me that they made a villain worse and more menacing than the freaking devil. How do you do that? How? How do you manage to make the devil sympathetic compared to you? Just that is a feet and a half, and this. Thing. Are we in like- Whoa! Oh. Okay, I just got trounced by, I suppose, dancing salt. And that's a sign and a half. Indeed. And also, not bad for your first for your first try. 
Yeah, not bad at all. It was pretty close. Though, I'm gonna be honest, I do kind of like the variety in attacks as morbid as they are. Just, they are something else. Like, there's a good variety of attacks. Though, the one thing I'm trying to figure out is why the heck is there just a random bouncing flame? I, I don't get it. Like, everything else makes sense. The lemons are like the crescents. The bread makes these bouncing, you know, cookie animals. The strawberries are kind of like missiles. The sugar cubes are basically like floating Medusa heads from Castlevania. Everything kind of makes sense. But the freaking flame? I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. I'm confused. It, it don't make sense. Seems to be kind of, seems to be, um, kind of similar to the, to the dough and the fact that, <clears throat> the fact that it does seem to have a, uh, go down on a curve, probably in the same direction, um, kind of more targeted towards you, though. I guess, but, <clears throat> my main thing is, how does it correlate? You know, I know he's that baker and all, so... I expect some sort of flame-based thing, but why a flame that just bounces around? That, to me, just doesn't add up. Like, the flame should be, in my opinion, something underneath. Like, you know, the flames of an oven slowly shooting upwards to cook whatever is being made. Especially in terms of baking, because... I don't know. I, th hmm. I think I'm reading too into this. Possibly, considering you're fighting a baker who is using life sentient ingredients to attack you. Yes. Like, he literally just emptied that poor basket's head. <sighs> either way, well, either way, this li little mm. flare was de it's definitely a way to fire, fire things up in the kitchen. Oh, well, yeah, definitely is one way to raise the heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have missed this. I have missed this a lot. As if I. Ah, I think after this recording, you and I need to just spend some quality time alone. Just have some R and R for you and me. That sounds magnificent. <laughs> I gotta focus on this fight because this is intense. Can't let myself get too distracted. Though with Cal in the room, that is always difficult. She does tend to um, make her presence known. <laughs> what? I'm married to the woman. I'm allowed to flirt. I know you are. I'm not. I'm not against it. Well, my uh, the audience will probably be like, "Ugh, come on," you know, because that's how they touché. get sometimes. Okay. Oh, touche. I do admit also, I just realized something with the pa with the pepper shakers. What's that? I eyes come out of the holes at the top. That is actually a bit disturbing. I'm not gonna lie. You're right. That wow, uh, wow. That is what uh... sort what sort of Lovecraftian being lives within those pepper shakers? What I'm trying to figure out is. Sweet Jesus, I'm sorry, I gotta say it. His facial expressions creep me out. Like, oh my god. This is some demented levels of uncomfortable. That is the best word to describe this boss in general. Demented. Purely demented. Just utterly freaking nuts. Like, I owe the devil an apology. He ain't that bad. I think I owe King Dice an apology too. I, I gotta bring them on set some point, cause I owe them a major apology for all the crap I put them through. They are nothing compared to this guy. Again, how are you become worse than the devil himself? I don't know. However, I must admit I do love the little detail, like that Pepper is trouncing salt. Like, that to me is funnier than it should be. Because, literally, he's getting pounced by Pepper. That's funny. That is amusing. Oh, come on. Right there, too. Yep. All right, one more go, and then I'm going to call it, because 
I don't want to be at this for an eternity. And I would like some privacy, you know? So I'm going to do this fair. one more time, and then we're going to have a break. You got this, Mugs. Well, let's hope. The <laughs> lemon thing... Uh, <laughs> The lemon certainly is a hard one to dodge because you have to judge based on how it enters. How it enters is going to dictate how it goes through. With everything else, it's kind of straightforward. But the lemons, or limes actually, because they're green, they have their own uniqueness to them. How they enter is not how they will leave. Perfect time to demonstrate this. Or not, as I literally enter the next phase. Which, interestingly enough, he takes a parryable item and then grows. That makes me wonder if maybe consuming parryable items actually has some sort of mag latent magical abilities. Have you not seen what happens when you get all five of them? Or even use one of them? I mean... Fair point. As I just realized, that was pretty much useless because the only thing that'll hit them is the freaking pepper. Probably should have saved that for the phase that was coming. I didn't think that through at all. And there it is. I knew it was coming at some point. Uh, well, that was exciting. That's putting it lightly. <laughs> well, tune in next time, ladies and gentlemen, as I try to desalt this freaking chef. So, until then... Thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like and a comment in the boxes below, letting me know your favorite moments from this episode. And a very special thanks to Cala Maria, aka Color Mix Studios, for joining us on this adventure. Always glad to come back, even if it is for an episode or two. Always glad to have you. Also be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and make sure all notifications are turned on. That way you know when this salt baker's goose is cooked. Also, share this video around to continue viewer spin support is greatly appreciated. And of course, a very special thanks to the Tier 2 and Tier 3 patrons who make this possible. Those being Five Way Dragon, Cinema Gun Reviews, Aaron Lena, Grimmy Leon, Hitsuyona Corrento, Honor Higgins, Aisha Bid88, Jesse Barbo6, Jesse Alvarez, Mighty Chlorophyte, Nagi Oki, Seth Ryan Dodson, Slug Destroyer 12, Sonic Star 21, Boss Baker, Dwayne and Jean, BTS Fan 0613, Duo 1414, Kylie Childs, Michaela Donnelly, Panda 475, Princess Bunnybone, Ruby the Wolf, Silver Fox MC, and Timid Recluse. If you'd like to support the Patreon family, as well as get videos 24 hours in advance, exclusive Let's Plays, and a chance to choose a Let's Play for this channel, check the link in the description below to our Patreon. And with all that said, this has been Mugman. And this has been Cala Maria. And we'll be seeing ya. Bye bye Now, now then, Mugs. Yes? What about that R&R? &R? Shall we? Oh, yes we shall. <laughs>